Social Security, and the concerning numbers that were just released. What this means for beneficiaries going forward. I have all the details for you in this video, so let's get into it right now. But if you haven't done so, or if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button right down below the video so you can join the fastest growing advocacy group and the number one channel right here on YouTube dedicated to bringing you daily updates every single day as it pertains to Social Security, SSDI, SSI, VA, RRB, low income, no income, money, benefits, stimulus, stimulus checks, and so much more that we're talking about right here on the channel every single day as there's a lot going on right now and a lot of things changing very, very rapidly. But don't worry, I am right here for you every single day right by your side with all of these updates so that you can stay tuned with all of these changes that continue happening. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I truly do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button right down below if you haven't done so yet. And let's get into this right away. And one quick side note, yes, my wife, Corey, will be back in just a couple minutes here with the newest updated list of shout outs for the names pulled right out of the fan club. So if you're in the fan club, make sure to stay tuned as that list is updated every single week. And there's a new list in every single video that we release every single day. So uh, uh, that'll be released here in just a couple minutes. All right, let's quickly talk about what is going on with Social Security and this new report that was just released that is very concerning as far as all of these numbers and what this actually means going forward for all of these tens of millions of beneficiaries, about 65 million beneficiaries as of right now are drawing on social security benefits. All right, let's talk through this as there's a lot of numbers here that I wanna go through and I wanna talk through this a little bit further because it's actually a little bit concerning and I think you're gonna see what I'm actually referring to here in just a second based on what we experienced in 2021. So here's what happened. In 2021, it was just reported that the Social Security Trust Funds returned 2.5% on all of the money. Now, it, it, traditionally, you would probably look at that and think, wow, 2.5%, that's not bad. If I was getting 2.5% interest on my bank account, right, any money in savings or checking, you'd probably think, wow, that's actually a pretty nice return, right? Well, you can't even go out today these days and get even a CD, Certificate of Deposit, and get 2.5%. It's not going to happen unless you lock it up for 20 years or something, right? Then maybe that could happen, but probably not even then. However, the trust funds for Social Security received back or earned 2.5% on every dollar invested last year in 2021. Now, in regards to a policy that was put in pl place way back in 1935, so what, 90 years ago, something like that ago, this policy was put in place and Social Security must invest its money in treasury bonds. Now, this is a very secure investment, um, buying bonds because, you know, they're backed up by the full faith of the federal government. Therefore, the federal government will continue to pay on these bonds and um it, traditionally, it's a very safe investment. However, a lot of times, very safe investments also yield very low returns. Like I said, 2.5% last year. Here's what else is interesting about this. Last year alone, the S&P 500 returned 29%. International stocks, 11%. And uh, commodities actually went up by 26%. So as you can see here, some of these other uh, indices out there and other investment funds actually went up to have multiple double digits, right? 29%, 11%, and 26%. That is a huge return on some of these other investment classes, right? Other asset classes. However, when it comes to the Social Security Trust Fund, 2.5%. Now, why is this number actually important? Like I said a minute ago, we might be looking at 2.5% and think, wow, that's actually a pretty nice return. Well, yeah, traditionally, it would probably be pretty good. It wouldn't be all that bad. However, here's the problem. Traditionally, well, not traditionally, I should say, more like in 2021, with inflation going up so incredibly fast, 6.8% in the year of uh, 2021 on average, that means that money in regards to purchasing power lost about 4%. So all the money that uh, Social Security has lost on a purchasing power basis about 4%. Therefore, it was a lose-lose 
for all of that money invested by Social Security into Treasury bonds. So when you look at it from a purchasing power standpoint, the money actually lost purchasing power rather than the money actually declining. I know it's a little bit confusing, so let me explain this a little bit further. So the money actually available to Social Security actually went up by about 2.5% because that was the yield that they actually returned on the money as a result of being invested in Treasury bonds. However, the problem is because of the massive inflation that we actually experienced in 2021, that is where the purchasing power actually declined by about 4%. So let me give you a quick little example. Now, again, this is just an example. I'm just making this up just to better understand this a little bit more about purchasing power. So let's just say at the end of 2020, $100 bought you 26 loaves of bread. Now, however, as a result of inflation in 2021, that same $100 today may only buy 24 loaves of bread. So therefore, with the same $100, you're getting two less loaves of bread as a result of inflation throughout 2021. Does that kind of make sense? So that's what's actually happening here. So basically what's happening is the money is actually going up, but the purchasing power of those dollars because of inflation is going um, down. Therefore, that same amount of money is buying less goods and services, which is exactly what inflation does, right? It depletes the purchasing power of our dollars. So not a good situation. So then it lends us to the point where we're wondering what's going to happen with the trust fund going forward and the insolvency. We've been hearing this for so many years now, right? What's going on with Social Security? Is it bankrupt? Is it out of money? Is the program going to end? Are they insolvent? How much longer will they be able to pay promised benefits? So here's the problem going forward is as they continue to invest in treasury bonds because they have to, that is the policy that was put in place way back in 1935 it's going to continue to deplete the purchasing power of those dollars because they're not keeping up with inflation, right? They're not returning the necessary amount of money that is needed to actually just keep up with inflation. Now, here's the thing. Previously, just getting back a rate of, say, 2.5%, it would have been totally fine because traditionally, historically, over long periods of time, inflation is about 2, 2.5%, maybe 3% on a hot year. However, you know, as we saw in 2020 and 2021, we saw inflation going very, very high, right? Um, five and a half percent, six and a half percent, something like this. So it was very, very high, two, three times of what inflation traditionally usually is. Therefore, it's eating away at the purchasing power of our dollars. That's the problem going forward. Now, as we continue to look forward into the entire year of 2022, according to economists and analysts and everybody going out there right now talking about this, they're anticipating inflation will be once again, historically high throughout 2022, therefore eating away at the purchasing power of our dollars even more throughout the course of this year. So this is the major problem going forward. Now, we might wonder, okay, well, why don't they just change the policy so that they can take this money in Social Security and actually invest it in something that'll yield a better return? Maybe like the S&P 500, that'll yield maybe another 28, uh, sorry, another 29%, just like it did in 2021. Maybe international stocks, 11%. What about commodities? 26%, like I mentioned a minute ago in 2021. Well, it's highly unlikely that these policies are going to change. So unfortunately, this is just what's happening with the social security trust funds and how these monies are actually allocated and um, actually invested but they have to be in treasury bonds, which again, it's a very safe investment because they're backed up by the full faith of the federal government. But again, a lot of times when we have to invest in something that is very safe and secure, the actual returns on that money is very, very low, right? So that's actually what we're seeing here. Now, again, according to everything that we're also seeing out there right now, as far as the insolvency date on Social Security, that has not changed. They're still anticipating in early about 2032, 2033, kind of around that range is when they would possibly see the trust funds being insolvent. Now, again, I've talked about this previously in other videos, but I want to hit on this really quickly so that there's no miscommunication or so that there's no confusion about this. If the trust fund becomes insolvent, in other words, the trust fund is empty, that does not mean that Social Security benefits are going to be ending. It just simply means that the trust fund will be empty, therefore they can only pay out about 78 to 79% of promised benefits. 
So if that means you're receiving a $1,000 benefit at that time, it would all it would automatically be reduced to about $780 to $790, seven, uh, 78 to 79% of promised benefits. That's what that would look like. That would not be a good situation. So that's why they need to uh, fix up these programs, shore up these programs, and make sure that they're able to pay out promised benefits for many, many, mo uh, many more years to come into the future. How can they do this? Number one, they can reform the program, and likely what they would need to do is raise taxes on Social Security um, as far as um, payroll taxes that are uh, gathered by people who pay in. You know, they go out and they work, and every week or bi weekly when uh, paychecks are cut, you know, you see that uh, deduction right on there from Social Security taxes. That's what they would likely need to do is raise Social Security. Here's what also is interesting. As of right now, as of right here, right now, there's 175 million people that are paying into the Social Security Trust Fund and about 65 million beneficiaries of Social Security. However, there's about 10,000 new people who are becoming eligible for Social Security every single day. And the baby boom generation is a huge generation. And there's a, a lot of these people, like I said, 10,000 of these people every single day that are becoming eligible for Social Security benefits. So uh, what we basically need to do is get more people into the workforce generating that tax revenue that can go into the trust funds to help pay for all of the benefits going out to everybody that's drawing right now. And again, if you're somebody that's uh, being able to draw right now on Social Security, Hey, congratulations. I mean, seriously, you've been waiting for this for many, 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 many years. You've been paying in for many, many years. And finally, it is time for you to start drawing on those benefits. I'm a huge advocate of that. If you're able to draw on Social Security, by all means, take the benefits because you've earned those benefits and uh, they're all yours. I mean, realistically, they are all yours. And uh, it's a very exciting time when you can start drawing on those benefits and you actually can submit your application for your Social Security benefits, right? It's a pretty exciting time for a lot of people. A lot of people work for many, many years looking forward to the day that they can retire and actually start drawing on their Social Security that they've earned. So congratulations. If you're already receiving or you're looking at receiving sometime soon, very exciting and a huge congratulations to all of you. So very cool stuff. With that being said, my wife, Corey, is going to come in right now. She's going to read that list of shout outs in this video. And remember, that list is updated every single week. And in every single one of our videos, we have a new list of names pulled right out of the fan club. So congratulations in advance. Again, if you're interested in checking it out, it is completely 100% optional. It is not required by any means at all. It is... Um, um, all my videos here on the, on the YouTube channel are completely free, always have been and always will be. However, if you're interested in checking out the fan club, there's a link down in the description. Otherwise, at the top of the comments section, I will also pin a comment there as well. Otherwise, with that being said, congratulations in advance, and here is the new list of shoutouts in this video. I'll catch you later. Make sure to subscribe down below, and of course, share this video or go back and check out any of the other 2,000 videos right here on the channel. And Corey, take it away, and I'll catch you again in the next video. Our shout outs today are Vicki Duhig, Julie Silverstein, Nancy JP55, John Drescher, and Boston Varner. Thank you for being members in the fan club.